Ghost acquired. Listen to me! You got the wrong guy! I'm a nobody! This is going to be fun. What is going on? The scarab shows you I'm is trying to become one with you. Watch and learn. How'd you do that? It wasn't me. It was just a suit. Do you understand now? Oh, yeah! Whoa. It's like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. I just want to rap. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. There's a brand new Blue Beetle trailer with a bunch of new footage, so we'll break it all down. We get a good look at one of the villains, Car Packs, in the movie, too. So I'll explain who that is and what his relation to the Blue Beetle characters, because he's actually been a villain to all the versions of the Blue Beetle in the comics. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're doing a giveaway for tickets to the Flash movie. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just post all your predictions for Blue Beetle in the comments. The connection between the Blue Beetle movie and what's happening in the Flash movie is they're using Flashpoint to sort of soft reboot the DC movies into James Gunn's DC Chapter 1 with like all the new connected movies. Now Matt Reeves will still be doing his versions of the Batman movie with Robert Pattinson and all those spinoffs like the HBO Batman series that we're going to get next year with the Penguin. But all that stuff's going to be Elseworlds. Most of the new stuff is going to be connected, starting with Superman Legacy. So I'm not expecting them to reference Blue Beetle or anything during Superman Legacy. But the idea is James Gunn said that the Blue Beetle movie could also be part of that new DC Chapter 1 because of the way they designed the Blue Beetle movie, the way they filmed it in the story to be relatively self-contained. Like it's taking place in Palmyra City, which is a reference to Ray Palmer, the Atom in the comics. And even though George Lopez, who plays his uncle during the movie, has that funny Batman joke when they're in Ted Kord's lab at the end of the trailer, they don't say which version of Batman it is. So I think the idea is they're kind of ambiguous about that. So I think the idea is that James Gunn is saying that that could be the new version of Batman that he's going to cast for Batman Brave and the Bold. So the idea is that it's just a little bit easier for these new Blue Beetle characters to transition to the new DC universe as opposed to the movies from before this that are super connected to everything that came before. That being said, though, whether or not Blue Beetle gets a sequel, we'll see. That just depends on how much money it winds up earning. Originally, they designed the movie to be just for HBO Max, so it was relatively smaller, but they liked it so much, like it turned out so well while they were working on it that they actually expanded it, they added more to the budget, and turned it into a big theatrical movie. So it kind of went in the opposite direction of the Batgirl movie. Like the Batgirl movie was meant to feel kind of like a CW type of movie, like a smaller movie just for HBO Max for streaming. And the people at Warner Brothers said that they didn't think that it was good enough for a theatrical release. So Blue Beetle is kind of like the opposite of that. Like, oh, this small little thing that we weren't going to pay too much attention to actually turned out so good that we want everybody to see this. We think it can make a lot of money. But it's still meant to be a much smaller movie in scope than, say, like the Flash movie, which is kind of like a mini Justice League movie. Like they specifically reference the Justice League characters and there are a lot of the Justice League characters in the Flash movie. But one of the other big things they do in this new footage is they introduce Becky G as the voice of the Scarab named Kaji Da. And it's literally the Scarab itself. Like the Scarab isn't just a technological device. It isn't just like an Iron Man AI like Jarvis or Friday. They're meant to be living techno-organic systems that are genetically engineered by the Reach in a different space sector. So the idea is that the Scarabs all have wills of their own and she could communicate with the other Scarabs and they can do whatever they want if they're not overridden, if their personalities aren't overridden by the Reach. Because the Reach do design them specifically for that. If you're a big Star Trek fan, it's kind of like Deep Space Nine with the Vorda and the Gem Hadar. Like they're genetically engineered basically by the Changelings in the Dominion to do whatever they want them to do. But they do have wills of their own and they can't override those instructions if they're strong enough. Which is kind of what happens with Blue Beetle's Scarab. Many, many thousands of years ago, the Reach created the Scarabs specifically because of their war with the Green Lantern Corps. Or like the earlier version of the Green Lantern Corps. Like way before present day. Previously, they were a very warlike culture trying to expand their territory in the universe. And the Green Lantern Corps stopped them, made this treaty. And as part of that treaty, they used the Scarabs as a back doorway to continue expanding their territory. But instead of having to do it the old way, like you see Darkseid during the Justice League Snyder Cut. And a life is found, Desaad. And we will stop at nothing to possess it. Ready the Armada? We will use the old ways. During that movie, he literally says that they're going to come conquer the Earth the old way. Like he's going to return with a giant fleet again. Of course, James Gunn is rebooting the universe, so we might never actually see them pay that off. Zack Snyder said that he didn't want to reveal too much about that because they might actually wind up doing the rest of that story. But I think he's talking more about like a comic book or something like that. 
I've already done a bunch of videos about all the deleted scenes that he's revealed for his Justice League trilogy, like Justice League 2, Justice League 3, so I'll post a link for that in the comments below. But the idea is that the Reach have had a lot of problems with the Green Lantern Corps in the past, so I think heading into the future, because they have this HBO Green Lantern series that they're making, which is kind of like True Detective with Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, they'd probably be the characters that would connect with Blue Beetle in the future in this connected universe. The other big coincidence, too, is that because Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse just came out in theaters, even though that's a Marvel movie, like a Sony Marvel Spider-Man movie, Becky G is a musician. She also did part of the soundtrack for Spider-Verse. What the Reach do is they genetically engineer these scarabs, and then before a civilization hits a certain technological milestone, they'll send a scarab that will eventually take over a host and overwrite that host's personality, use the power of the scarab to take over that planet for the Reach, and while that's happening, the Reach will basically move like this giant world ripper above the planet and eventually mine its resources once the scarab takes over the planet. So the backstory here is that the Reach sent this scarab to Earth about a thousand years ago, and the reason why it hasn't activated for the previous versions of Blue Beetle like Ted Kord or Dan Garrett, like you see there are suits in Ted Kord's lab here. The reason why they were never able to use the true power of the scarab or unlock the scarab is because the Earth's civilization just hadn't reached a particular technological milestone until the present day of Jaime Reyes. What winds up happening, though, is that this scarab winds up being damaged, which is why the Reach aren't able to control it the way that they control the scarabs normally, which allows Jaime Reyes in the scarab here to do what they want to do, like override the Reach's instructions and be superheroes and try to stop them. So the idea is that this is sort of like a rogue scarab not doing what the Reach tells it to do. They got into this plot during the Young Justice series pretty deeply, like the Reach show up and become big villains during one of the seasons, even though Darkseid is always like the much bigger villain behind everything. Blue Beetle is able to fight the other scarabs because the way that his scarab works and is able to communicate with the other scarabs and convince them to stop fighting him. The Reach themselves are super powerful. Their technology is way more advanced than anything on Earth. The only beings that could potentially withstand them are people like the Justice League, like Superman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, because his technology is based on Apocalyptian Motherbox technology, which is more advanced than the Reach's technology. People like the Flash, Green Lantern, even though we didn't see Green Lantern on the Justice League yet during the original movies. So I think the idea is that even if they don't do Blue Beetle 2, like if they don't do a direct sequel to this movie, they'll have him fight with the other future Justice League characters. The other new scenes are of him getting ready to fight one of the other main villains in the movie, Conrad Carpax, in his suit, who during the movie seems like he's working for Victoria Cord and Cord Industries, like their finger puppet. Victoria Cord is meant to be the true villain of the movie, even though the Reach themselves would technically be the main villain of the movie, I don't think they're as big during this movie, Victoria Cord herself is meant to be the actual main villain, just for this particular movie. But in the comics, Carpack started out as a normal human who was a villain to the original Blue Beetle way back in the day, Dan Garrett. During his many fights against Dan Garrett, he discovered a secret lab belonging to Ted Cord's uncle, more connections to the second version of Blue Beetle. The lab contained an indestructible suit of armor that you see in the trailer here. He couldn't get it to work and wound up electrocuting himself, killing himself. His mind got transferred into the robot, so he basically became this immortal robot with the mind of a human. And because he was immortal, he just eventually lived on to become a villain to the second version of Blue Beetle, Ted Kord. And in the movie, it seems like what they're saying is there may have been a similar type of origin story where he used to be a human and somehow his mind was transferred into the robot suit, which was built by the modern Cord Industries controlled by Victoria Cord. And essentially, she's forcing him to go after Blue Beetle, controlling him like a finger puppet, the way that the Reach are trying to control Blue Beetle like a finger puppet. And they have parallel story arcs where they both kind of have to override that and do whatever they want to do. So 50-50 on whether or not Carpack survived the end of the movie, like whether or not Blue Beetle winds up killing him in a fight or he decides to turn good and somehow dies after trying to help Blue Beetle. The way they're fighting here, like with the sword here, looks very inspired by Kamen Rider or Ronin Warriors, like very anime inspired, Super Sentai particularly, like Japanese series they use for Power Rangers, stuff like that. The way they depict his powers in the trailer, the powers of the suit, are pretty accurate. It does pretty much whatever he wants it to do, forms whatever he wants it to form, kind of like the way Green Lantern rings work. Whatever you can imagine, I can create. Let's party. Choice. Maybe if things go well for Blue Beetle, he'll have some minor crossover with those Green Lantern characters. If you're preparing for a space invasion, the Green Lantern characters are the ones that you would want to talk to. It seems like the Jenny character is the one that leads them into Ted Kord's former lab. 
This big array looks like it might have something to do with the Reach, the other scarabs, like the whole idea that there is invasion coming. Maybe he'll get a vision of that through the suit's systems. Like, oh, wait a minute, what is it that I'm seeing? This is a giant alien race that's coming to kill us. You hear Susan Sarandon's voice as Victoria Cord saying, the scarab chose you, but it belongs to me. That's right out of the comics. You see her drones, her men working for Cord Industries. I think the whole idea is that during the movie, Ted Cord isn't around. Something's happened to him. He's disappeared. Maybe they'll bring him back in some way. But just like in the comics, when Jaime Reyes first debuted, when he first became Blue Beetle, Ted Cord wasn't around to explain everything to him. That didn't happen till later. During the New 52 reboot and then eventually the DC Rebirth reboot, also there was a couple of DC reboots, they did bring the Ted Kord character back and he started helping Jaime Reyes, giving him advice, and they both were their versions of Blue Beetle. You see them take off in Ted Kord's classic Blue Beetle ship. Like I said, he has a lot of Iron Man style technology. He uses his wealth, his intellect to make tech to become a version of Blue Beetle because the scarab doesn't work for him. Then inside Ted Kord's lair, we see a whole bunch of Easter eggs in the background. There's an Easter egg for Dan Garrett's classic Blue Beetle suit, Ted Kord's classic Blue Beetle suit. Then obviously the joke from George Lopez's father talking about Batman. Batman is a fascist. Just because they're inside Ted Kord's very Batman-like lair, like Ted Kord's version of a Batcave. Because the movie's coming out in August, we'll start getting more trailers as we get closer to Comic-Con. Like, remember, Comic-Con is happening at the end of July, so there'll be a bunch of trailers. It'll be like Trailer Fest from Marvel and DC and a bunch of other stuff, too. I've got a bunch of Flash videos planned for the next couple of weeks, so if you have any special requests about just DC videos in general, just post them in the comments below. I just posted my review of the Flash movie. You can click here for that and click here for all my other Flash trailer videos and Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.